All right, I think we're live. Hello. Um, somebody, somebody has donuts. <laughs> Great. Um, hello. This is the live stream, my first live stream for the class uh, Games and Culture, a winter term class at the University of Mary Washington. And I am the professor of this class, Zach Whalen, and this is the first live stream wherein I will be introducing the class and getting you oriented to things. I'm going to go ahead and fade down the background music. Let me pull that down kind of gradually there, and then I'll mute it in the background so you don't see it. So anyway, hello. Um, I assume if you're watching this that you're in the class. I've got 14 viewers, it looks like, on the stream, which um, it's close to the number of students in the class. Uh, it's actually 20-something last I checked, but I know a few were uh, probably need to drop the class. But in any case, um, there's a number of you here and, and you're watching, and that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, the A couple of just uh, basic, um, you know, setting the, the ground rules or whatever. Uh, the purpose of these streams is to let me talk to you. And because this is an online class, this is mostly how you'll see me. Um, I also hope to get to see you sometimes, and so in some cases, like in about an hour, I would like to invite you to join me in a Zoom conference so we can actually talk to each other, like, like back and forth. But um, this lecture is essentially simulating the first day of a typical class, which is often known as syllabus day, and indeed, I do plan on spending most of my time in the next hour talking about uh, the syllabus. So, um, <laughs> just, wow. Thank you. Um, I was, <laughs> that's weird. Um, no, thank you. Uh, let's see. Al Coffin, I just saw on the stream says no audio. However, uh, my, it shows audio and I don't know if that's still the case. I, it was, it was silent for a bit, but then it should be playing now. So, uh, let me know if you can or cannot hear me just either, either in the, uh, Twitch or, hold on a second, let me just check it. Yeah, it's it's playing on my preview, audio, audio is playing out on my my preview, so I, I believe it's going out there, um, I don't know. Um, it, so just in general, just, just another point of view, if, if you can hear me obviously, um, the normal ways you can interact with me during the stream, you can, uh, Al Coffin is using the Twitch chat right now, which is fine, although I would actually prefer you use the um, the Discord chat, which you can see straight above me here. So as you can see with I'm Tired, whoever just posted that, um, that's actually a better place to comment and leave me things because I'll see those quicker and also those will be embedded in the video for the live stream. So, um, like in the, in the archived version of the live stream. So, um, yeah, and, and as you can see, I'm tired, uh, Kelly. Your your comments actually will appear on the screen under that name, so hopefully that's okay with you. Um, but that you have to get into the Discord to do that. So no, you do not have to make a Twitch account. The the convenience, the only thing that I can say is it, an advantage of having a Twitch account is that you can use that Twitch account to just to to subscribe to my channel, and then whenever I go live, you'll see the notifications. Uh, but you'll see the notifications, and you'll know that I'm going live through lots of other ways too. So that's not uh, the most uh, most um, it may, it's not the most um, necessary thing. Um, I'm, yeah, I'll, I, I can, I can, I can hear my myself on the preview playback on a different computer. So let me just, uh, I, I, let me just post it in the Discord again. I mean, it, it looks like it's. It looks like it's playing audio, uh, but Al's saying that he, he can't see it still, so let me just check in here. Can you all hear me? I'll just do. So, okay. Yeah, and so Kelly just uh, acknowledged that they can hear me, so thanks. Thanks. Um, good. I, I think, um, yeah, yeah, Al Coffin, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess. I don't know what your viewing is on, so uh, I guess try something different. Um, others in Discord confirm they can hear me. Um, so the, okay, yeah, that just volume might be, I mean, I've got it up as high as I want to go in the microphone. It's clipping a little, it's, it's on the edge of clipping a little bit, so I don't want to take it any higher as far as like what I'm, like how I'm recording it. Um, 
but yeah as you can see this is kind of a big part of the first day of class is kind of figuring out how we're talking to each other and and what we're doing um, i see a couple of people by the way connecting to the voice channel and discord i mean you certainly can do that if you want to but that's not how i'm planning to stream at least not today i might later but um today that's the the plan okay i'll cough and looks like you're working on the phone yeah, that's great yeah i mean whatever works you know i don't know what else may have i don't know where else you were viewing this so i don't know what the issue may have been uh, i have seen that though sometimes where sometimes there's like every stream except one works fine and then the person who's streaming says it works for them but they i can't hear them uh so i don't know i don't know what the issue may or may not be but uh, yeah, welcome, and uh, good to see you all here and online, up to 17 viewers, so great. Or maybe that's all twice, you know, um, with the computer and the phone. Um, that's, that's good, e either way. Um, cool, so uh, I, this is a, an online class, obviously, and we, um, you know, we will get to know each other a little bit over the, the, over the next three weeks. Uh, it'll be very quick, though, and uh, it'll be, it'll, it will be just, you know, just to get it out of the way, this will be fairly intense in certain ways. Uh, that I'm like I'm going to be putting a lot of content in front of you, especially this week. Um, if you think of it, one way of thinking of this is like every day is like a week. So it, what I'm trying to do today is what I would normally try to accomplish in the first week of this class if I were teaching it in a fall or spring semester. So it, it's it's a lot, um, but it's it's what you've signed up for. It's what I've signed up for. Um, I hope. I hope we can make it work. Uh, I certainly plan to do whatever I can to make it work, and uh, I, you know, I'm excited about the uh, the challenge of it. Um, but you know, we need to be very clear that this will be a challenge. Um, and Kelly, if you want to take notes, you can certainly. But this is mostly I'm going to be giving you a tour of uh, the Canvas course mostly for right now. So I mean, the information is there. I'm just going to kind of be pointing it, pointing you to it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, take note if it helps you, but you don't need to necessarily. Um, I will be doing a lecture, a more traditional lecture later today, and so that will that might be something you might want to take notes about. But it's not. Um, this is not a class where I'm going to be testing you on things. So uh, I hope that you use the knowledge that you gain in these lectures uh, on your projects. But it's not something where I will ask you to recall specific names and dates. It's just I, w I want you to understand the context for things and be able to speak intelligently about these things in the context of the projects that you create but that's that's getting ahead of myself a little bit uh, but that's that's the idea um, okay great so uh down to 16 viewers <laughs> I, I don't know I, I keep checking the viewer account just to see how it's going but it looks like uh, that's that's probably about right um so this uh stream by the way will, will be archived so i record these all and then uh, what well, Twitch does, and then I download it from Twitch and upload it to YouTube because YouTube keeps the archive up permanently, and Twitch uh, does not. So I'm going to be um, I'm going to be uh, doing that every day. The other thing too is Twitch provides uh, Twitch does not provide um, automatic captioning, but YouTube does. So um, I like using Twitch for streaming, but I like using YouTube for archiving. So I'm going to just do both of those, but you'll see those uh, posted in various ways. So anyway, um, I will hopefully get to know some of you all a little bit later today. Uh, my plan is to do a, um, uh, a Zoom conference uh, after this live stream ends, and um, hopefully uh, we can get everybody in there. Um, you should, by the way, and I see many of you are already, um, you should plan on uh, being online in Discord when I'm streaming, because um, that's a good place to chat with me or with each other as we talk about things. Um, so, uh, so I, I guess kind of make get in the habit of doing that. Um, I, I will probably talk about Discord a little bit more in the Zoom conference because I don't want to put too much Discord content on the stream because that's you all and I don't want to, like I haven't asked you to consent to having your names and identities revealed on the live stream. So uh, I'm not going to be doing that uh, too much on the live stream. But um, please, you know, check out Discord. Um, I, I imagine many of you have used Discord before. I know a couple of you have in my other classes. Um, but uh, I will give you a kind of a tour of how it works and what we what we plan to do with it um, shortly. So uh, just bear with me on that. Um, last night I was streaming last night uh, just to kind of test some things out, and uh, actually a couple of you joined me for that. But um, last night as I was streaming, my wife stopped by with a bowl of popcorn, and, um, and she just now brought me a donut, and I'm like, I really want to eat it, but I don't want to like eat on the stream. <laughs> this isn't that kind of stream. Um, Oh man, I mean, it's not like a high quality, it's just a, a wise donut, you know, one of these bakery donuts and it's, yeah, probably not that 
great as far as donuts go, but it's a donut, so it's good, right? Um, anyway, I'll just have to eat that later. Let me move it over here. No, I'll eat it later. I'll move it over here. <laughs> so it's not so much in my way. Uh, I'll eat it on the Zoom call, maybe. Uh, I have coffee, so that's good. I just, we had to go, uh, we ran out of coffee, so my wife went to get coffee this morning. So, you know, cheers. All right on. So uh, let me spend the next bit talking through a couple other things. I'm kind of uh, like, I don't have a very specific, you know, agenda spelled out for, for this uh, first stream here. So um, if you have questions, just go ahead and put them in there and I'll, um, you know, respond as I need to and kind of go that way. But I, I, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of work through the, the Canvas site and talk through different parts of the class. And along the way, hopefully you'll get a sense of what this class is about and what it's for and what we hope to accomplish. Um, the uh, you all are saying go ahead and eat it. Um, so okay, so big picture. This is a class about video games and uh, computer games, electronic games, and so part of what we want to do here is understand what those are, uh, the history of where those came from, and ultimately this is a class called games and culture because I want to understand these as important cultural artifacts. And when we call a video game a cultural artifact, what that means is that. It's something that tells us something about culture. Um, so this is the, uh, that's the big idea. So Al just asked a question, will you need to buy any video games for this class? Um, uh, maybe, um, but let me, let me put an attack in that and get to that in a minute. Um, you, 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 I, would, I would like for you to play extensively at least one video game, but uh, it's a list and there may be something on that list that you already own and several of those are gonna be free. So you may, choose to buy one of the games on there, or you might have a free alternative or something else that you've already got. So anyway, let me, let me get to that in a minute. But uh, again, this is the big picture stuff, right? So it's about understanding how video games have informed culture and represent culture through different time periods. Today, I'm going to give, uh, yeah, the list is in the syllabus. Um, it's a tentative list, but it's, it's there. Uh, so uh, today is going to be uh, a lecture a little bit later today about um, early history of video games, but really, as you'll hopefully see through that lecture, it's more of a, um, it's not history so much as a formal uh, exercise in trying to define video games by understanding, understanding what lies at the edge. In other words, what is the edge between something that is a video game and something that is not a video game? And there's a historical edge to that. So we can look at various things. And I've come up with, I think, I think I came up with, Eight, yeah, eight different candidates for uh, eight, eight different artifacts that have a decent claim for being the first video game. Um, so if we, if we ask that question, like what was the first video game? I've got at least eight possible answers, and so that's part of what we'll try to do today is figure out kind of what you know what we mean by those different answers. But again, that's later. So uh, the class just, um, you know, I'm just kind of going through different various topics uh, throughout the, as I said in the announcement and in the email. The basic plan Monday through Thursday for these three weeks is to stream every day at 10 a.m. and then do different things throughout the other, the, you know, after 10. Um, today there will be another lecture, another live stream lecture, but usually I will not do two. Um, usually it would just be one at 10 and then other kinds of activities and interactions. Um, there might be a slightly longer live stream on Thursday because I'm going to have a couple of guest speakers and so we might want to spend more time with them than you would normally spend uh, hearing from me. So uh, I look forward uh, to that. Um, and Kelly, you do need books except that they are already provided to you. So uh, the one textbook is, a, is available through the library and so if you click on the link in the syllabus, and I'll, I guess I could just pull this up on the browser, but uh, if you click on that link, it goes to the, it should take you to the library's page that lets you access the online version of that class, uh, of that book. Um, and then there's also another book, uh, Metagaming, which is available just on the open web, and so I'll link you to that. Other readings will just be things that are already on the web, or in a couple cases, I might just send you a PDF through Canvas, so there's no textbooks to buy uh, for that. So if you, if you did see a version of the syllabus that said something about textbooks, uh, about purchasing a couple of textbooks, that might have been out of date. Um, so just, you know, the current state is no, uh, no textbooks, other, no, nothing, no books to buy. Uh, Sorry, sorry. I'm just going to check my email real quick because I see I don't want to pull it up on the stream, the browser that I have on the stream, but I want to see if somebody's emailed me. Um, no, it's not. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, just making sure there's not some uh, a student trying to figure out what to do with the live stream. 
Okay, so let's go to Canvas, and um, I will continue to talk about some of the goals for the class and some of the structures for the class. Those are both those are the two big things that we're uh, that we're trying to talk about today. So I've got it pulled up here in Student View, and so this is kind of your view of things. I will probably end up switching back to uh, uh, Professor View um, if I find things I need to fix because this is a uh, as it all, as is always the case for me. I've Publish the course, but it's still not totally done. So I'm going to be continuing to tweak and evolve and fill in content, and I may see errors that I need to correct uh, while I'm you know, explaining it to you. So I may be doing some of that too. But you can certainly explore. This is basically how it looks, how it should look to you uh, when you view it. And just a couple of kind of big picture things. If you look at the homepage of the course, I've got it organized into three modules. But really, a module here is just an organizing construct that lets me say, here's week one, week two, week three. And then for each of those weeks, uh, we're going to spend uh, some time looking at three big th different <laughs> three different big themes. So first week is going to be dedicated to history, but really I call it histories because what I want to kind of move towards is not so much video game history as video game historiography. So it's not just the question of like what is the history of video games, but it's the question of how do we understand and talk about the history of video games. Like that's how we move from history to historiography. And that's what I want to try to do. Um, but of course the history is, is there, there are things that I'd like to make sure you know about the video, about the history of video games, including some of these games that make a claim to being the first. So I, I will be definitely talking about those. Um, so as you can see, we'll talk about generations on, on uh, tomorrow, uh, platforms, uh, arcade games on Thursday. And on Thursday, that's when we will have our guest speakers who are two owners of a, um, uh, arcade that's getting ready to open um, in uh, about three weeks. So I'm excited to see that open and hear from them. Uh, but we'll, I'll talk about more about them in a little bit. And then, uh, so these are the four days. And then week five, I mean, day five is really just a catching up day. So I don't have anything, I, I don't plan on doing anything formal that day at all. Uh, I might live stream just to kind of be online in case anyone wants to chat online through that format. But um, I don't have anything planned as far as a lecture or an activity. The, the point really then is probably going to be working on your your first project, which is due that day. So that that's what I'd like for you to, to spend that time doing. Sorry, I'm just, I, where, the, the place I stream from, I can see my whole backyard. And so um, there's a large bird back there and I'm trying to figure out if it's a bird of prey or if it's just a, a pigeon. It's probably, or, you know, what are they called? Uh, dove, like a morning dove. It's probably just a morning dove. But you never know. I did see um, once. I don't think I was actually streaming, but I, was, I saw a hawk land, land on my kid's swing set and then swoop down and, and eat some bunnies, which was kind of sad. I tried to stop it, um, but it didn't work. I, I, um, it was like a bunny nest that I knew of, and so I was like, I saw the hawk like stalking the nest, and so I put a um, like a picnic table over the top of their nest, thinking that it would protect it. And then as I was, I was watching this, the hawk like swooped down and then like walked under the picnic net table and grabbed the bunnies and that was it. But you know, circle of life uh, is kind of sad, but uh, oh well. But I learned how, it, how uh, determined a hawk can be, I suppose. Anyway, um, let's take a look at a couple more things. So, so let, me, let me actually show you, well, okay. So some of this is still pretty skeletal, but I do want to show you the, the idea of the module because you can start at the beginning and then kind of click through next using the next button at the bottom to move through it. And like I said, some of this is still pretty much just a placeholder while I fill in the content, but I will be filling in the content. Um, but within each of these, I have this little header here that kind of tells you where you are in the class. So here's where we are right now. We're day one of week one. And so here's what our schedule is for today. So at 10 a.m., we're live streaming on Twitch. That's what I'm doing now. Uh, at, I'll say approximately 11, so uh, maybe we might take a little break. Um, I would like to invite you to join me in a Zoom discussion. And then I plan on taking a lunch break basically and then streaming again at 1230 with a lecture. And so that'll just be something you just can watch or you can watch it in the archive version, uh, honestly. Um, but you should plan on participating in class for three or four hours a day uh, over the next three weeks. Um, it's, it's a lot, I know, but you know I'm doing it too. Um, so it's just what we've got to do to try to get through three weeks of class. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely the lunch break is good, right? Um, yeah, hawks are, are they're impressive animals, but they, they can be a bit of a nuisance. Um, we've also got in my neighborhood, I, I, I noticed last night, I was walking and it was like, um, it was like in the evening. And uh, so it was like, if you remember yesterday, it was really misty, if you're, if you're in the area, uh, it was really misty and, and you know, it's getting dark. And then um, 
there's one kind of unusual house in my neighborhood where the uh, owner is really into pink flamingos and so there's pink flamingos everywhere and it's a really cool house um, she has this like pink pink uh, Christmas lights but uh, behind the house there's like a dead tree and it was full of probably 40 black vultures just like lurking there in the dark or like in the in the you know in the growing darkness and it was so cool uh, I, I've seen that in another uh, we, we recently moved to this neighborhood a couple years ago now um, but I there was a similar tree a similar creepy house and tree in my, my old neighborhood and so I, I think it's cool that the the black vultures have a home here too and I shouldn't say creepy I mean the houses aren't creepy it's just kind of an, a, a noteworthy house like you say oh the house with the blank flamingos it's like oh yeah that one um and uh yeah she always sees the also sorry, I keep t uh, I'm like kind of wild up so I keep going on these tangents my mind keeps jumping these different tangents um this is a house that's noteworthy in the neighborhood on Halloween because she gives out um uh, pudding <laughs> instead of candy she gives like um she's that is the pudding house um so anyway uh the let's see um it is too many filters i agree um i i in my i estimated about 40 um in the old neighborhood i counted one time and i got over 120 uh in one little corner like in two or three trees it was it's impressive and they get they kind of because they just sort of lurk there like vampires it is so uh, they're in, impressive animals um but not totally uh welcome i suppose anyway um the uh let me see I, I keep getting distracted but that's part of you know that's life this is where I, this is me me being real you know uh so here's the this is today and um i've got a couple of things re referenced here that probably need to be explained a little bit um you should have joined the discord server by now i'm not going to put the link on canvas because i i do want to make the canvas course public um i don't remember if i did that yet but i do want to make it public and i don't but i don't want that link to be public so uh the invitation link so i sent that through email um, if you are in the Discord right now, you've, you've done what you need to for that. Let me just make sure. If you have not done that yet, but you're watching, do let me know on the Twitch chat or send me an email um, so I can give you a new link because the initial link will probably be expiring pretty soon. So make sure you, um, yeah, make sure you get that in. And you just have to do it once, but once you're in there, you're in there and you should be good. Uh, okay, uh, the other thing that I've, I'm mentioning here is finding your team, and this is something I can show you maybe. No, I can't show you because uh, I'm a uh, not a real student, but uh, I have put you in teams, and I guess maybe I should go ahead and talk about that a little bit. Um, let me see if my, uh, yeah, so I'm logged in as test student. Oh, I accidentally showed the roster there. Um, but the, yeah, so here it is. Um, you should be able to go to this page. I'm not going to expand on these, but the uh, if you if you're logged into Canvas, if you go to people and you go to groups, excuse me, you should see three groups there: blue, green, and red. And you are in one of those groups. And the idea is that this is a group, a cohort of peers that you will interact with during this class. Um, this is probably not a group that you will col collaborate with to produce a group project. Um, I don't currently plan on doing a group project with this class, but um, if I did, it would certainly it would be optional. Uh, like collaboration would be optional but uh, the intent of these teams is really to have a a group of people to connect with um, this class is not huge but it is fairly large and there's always a tendency in online classes for people to um, have a hard time getting into the community of the class and so the idea of these teams is that you have a slightly smaller community to connect with connect with and interact with and, and uh, also like play some games with and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more so um, Okay, so if it's group optional, yeah, that's that option is is exists and that's fine. Um, but I, uh, you know, I, I I know that group projects can be a drag, and especially and the biggest challenge of group projects often is just the logistics of coordinating like who's available when, and that can be even trickier if you're online. So uh, I, you know, I don't. I mean, I don't always see the, I, I guess I, I do sometimes see the value of an online uh, course, uh, of, a, of a group project rather, but I think in an online course, I think the value is a little bit outweighed by other things. So, Cool, okay, so, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the teams are random, by the way. I just I just clicked a button in Canvas that said assign them randomly, um, and that's that's there. 
And uh, yeah, and Kelly had a good question. If you don't have any video editing programs, uh, I can make some suggestions, but also one option is just to create a storyboard for it so you don't actually have to produce the video. Um, but if you did want to actually see the video, that might be an opportunity for, um, for collaboration. Like you can write a storyboard and someone else could, uh, could try to edit it together. So just a thought, but uh, those are all options. And yeah, I mean, I'm using uh, OBS right now to, rec to record this video. OBS is free and open source, and uh, it, it works on uh, even pretty um, uh, modest hardware. So if you have a PC or Mac, uh, then you, I'm sure you could run it. You're, yeah, I'm sure it is capable of running OBS. Um, as far as editing, it's not an editor really, but um, I can make some suggestions uh, that are free. Uh, but in any case, that's, that's just a... Uh, you know, again, get, keep getting ahead of myself. Um, anyway, so, so find your group, and if you look in Discord, and I, I don't, I'm not gonna pull up Discord right now, but you have, for each of those teams, you have a text channel and a voice channel dedicated to each of those teams. So if you just want to, for, for, for situations where you just wanna talk to your team, that's, that's what those channels are for. So check that out. Uh, in fact, I will probably suggest you all do something with each other uh, later today. All right, cool, so let me get back to what I was talking about. So one thing I will be doing is for day one, this is day one origins, um, I'm going to be introducing the class and what I'm gonna do here is actually, uh, I'll embed this video and then later, like when I do this lecture, I will embed the slideshow from this lecture. Um, so like all of the stuff, like if you need to come back to this later or if maybe anyone joins the class, uh, like adds the class tomorrow, which you can still do, um, I can just point them to this page and everything will be here. But similarly, you, anyone for the future can continue to come back to these kind of day by day. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna fill these in as fast as I can as far as the, uh, looking ahead for the rest of the week. Uh, but okay, let's take a look at the, let's do the syllabus. All right, so let me take some coffee here. This class accomplishes a lot uh, in terms of uh, requirements. Um, and it could do more actually, but uh, it's an elective for the minor in digital studies, uh, which is which I am the director of, by the way. So if you're interested in the minor or if you have questions about it or issues with it, then uh, talk to me. Um, this is also, wait, that shouldn't be weighted. Oh, gone. So I'll fix that in a minute. But um, this class is also uh, digitally intensive. So if you are, uh, if you are, if you've switched to or if you opted into the 2020 gen eds or if like if you're a freshman and this is your first uh, or second semester um, and you're on the 2020 gen ed system this counts as a digital intensive class and this is also an honors class so if you are here for that reason that's that's great as well now i, I guess i should say if you're not an honors student you are certainly still welcome to take the class it's just that if you are an honors student this class checks a box for you so um, it's, it's designed that way um, and it has some, there are some aspects of the design that are based on making sure that it meets the expectations of the honors program. Um, it's not just intensity, but uh, like in terms of trying to get a lot done, but it's about um, things like metacognition and thinking about processes as opposed to just getting through them. And I think, I think you'll see that as the class progresses, but it's kind of woven in and hopefully, um, hopefully will become clear uh, as we go. Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to just stand here and read this. I invite you to read it, but I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. Uh, so these are the specific things that are going on here uh, that I've created. The, the specific learning outcomes that I've created for the class are expressed here. And I think these are pretty um, <laughs> complicatedly expressed, as, uh, as you might say. Um, this is the, uh, which is, I'm trying to get a lot done in each of these little bullet points here. Um, but one way to think of this class, just in terms of what it's trying to do is this is an English class. I mean, it is literally an English class, but, um, it's a, it's a, it, it is like a literature class, except that instead of, instead of studying literature, we're studying video games. So in a literature class, it would be important to understand the differences of genre, like poetry versus drama versus, uh, prose. Um, and the history of how those genres formed and, and what those genres meant to authors using them at different points in history. Similarly, we're going to talk about video games as genres and talk about uh, you know, different platforms and try to put those in a historical context and understand what they mean in those contexts. So that's the main way that culture gets into this. But as you notice, if you, especially if you take an English class, whenever you do that, when you're talking about actual people in actual cultural situations, uh, these aren't just sort of isolated geniuses writing from towers. Like these are people that live with issues of uh, gender, of race, of, of class, uh, people with neurological diversity. Like these are real lived people that have these different 
identities that inform their experience of culture and also that we can use to understand their experience of culture and our experience of culture as well. And so it's something that ends up kind of being uh, a, an important theme in a lot of literature classes and certainly will be in this as well. So and this is kind of the standard uh, list of cultural studies uh, qualifiers or things that we're interested in. So gender, race, sexuality, class, labor, and uh, neurological diversity. Uh, these are just a few. There's probably more, but these will come up mostly in week two uh, as we get through this class. Uh, okay, so these are that's the, this is the class learning outcomes. This, these paragraphs here are related to the digital intensive requirements and how this class meets those. Um, we're going to understand multiple viewpoints by looking at different ways of making video games, but also different reasons for video games. Um, many of the games that I'm going to ask you to play won't be uh, commercial mainstream AAA titles. These will be kind of indie games or, or quirky philosophical experiments and things like that. And so understanding different perspectives, but also understanding video games as a way to present a perspective, that's a really important theme in this class. And that's also in line with a digital intensive learning outcome. Um, using digital tools, you'll do that if you um, edit video for the uh, commercial, but you may have uh, an opportunity for other projects as well. But I think also just using Discord uh, is a, an example of using a digital tool, and I certainly expect you to use it safely, ethically, and effectively. So uh, that's another way that this class hopefully accomplishes that learning outcome. Um, okay, so I'm, yeah, I, I didn't want to stand here and read this, but I kind of am, but I'm going to keep going because I wanted to emphasize a couple more things. Uh, you are going to be, uh, this is one of the final projects. I'm going to ask you to create a metagame. Of course, we'll talk about that as we get there. And uh, I say design, well, I say create, but really design. So you don't necessarily have to program or design or actually make something. But um, describing it is a significant challenge. And this is having to, this has to do with understanding uh, platform possibilities and using those to interpret and interrogate even um, uh, video games and video game studies which is the field we find ourselves in. Sorry, uh, your comment cut off there, Al. Let me see what that says. You, oh, Jack, um, you made a list of predi prediction list. Huh, okay. Like a prediction of what games might be, might appear in this class or like what this class might be about. Um, Cause like, uh, yeah, I, there's a list of games and certainly examples. I don't know this one. that. I'll just mention when the darkness comes, but it certainly sounds um, dark. <laughs> I think one thing that I'm interested in is like when you look at um, artistic video games or, or games that are very much trying hard to be art, uh, a lot of them do tend to be sad and depressing and about death and about aging and things like that. And I, I'm interested, I, I'm not sure where that theme comes from, except that I think that theme comes from you know this this challenge like uh, game designers that that work in those kind of genres they they're interested in kind of proving that what they're doing is art and so of course something that's sad is art or you know something that's i mean because it's not fun so what else is it uh, it can be very compelling and arresting and and disturbing or whatever but um that's the kind of thing that art often does and so that's i think something that game designers um, go to, but I think I'm always interested in finding examples of art games that aren't depressing, and so that's kind of uh, something I've looked for in my uh, in my list. But some of them certainly are about depression or other things. Um, you know, I think I have Depression Quest in there, for example. Um, but these are uh, not the only way to do interesting things with video games, I guess. So not the only reason for doing things with um, uh, with this with the. Uh, uh, with video games. So yeah, um, Undertale, Bioshock, Portal. I, I, I mean, these are games, if, if you're kind of looking down the syllabus a little bit. Um, I haven't actually played Undertale. I have, it's one of these games I have and I just, I, and I sort of know about and so I feel like I haven't been super compelled to play it yet, but I, I will. Um, Bioshock, classic, you know, and, and it's crazy to think that Bioshock and Portal, they're both like, what, 13, 14 years old now at this point, but, um, you know, still I think really uh, important games in terms of what they're accomplishing in terms of storytelling. So really fascinating games and, and strongly recommended. Um, I mean, those are games that are not going to be free, but they they go on sale different, at, in different ways and different combinations and often in, uh, can be acquired for not that much money if you have the right kind of uh, platform that can play it. And it's because they're a bit older, um, there's a good chance that your your uh, even your laptop, even if it's not a gaming laptop, can probably do a decent job with them. So anyway, I, let me get to get to that. I see many of you typing. Um, I'm going to try to get through a few more things on the syllabus and then I'll come back. 
Uh, okay, so uh, there will be some uh, research and some academic writing in this class. Um, this is not a writing intensive class though, so that's not gonna be like the only thing we do, but it will inform how we approach this stuff. Basically, I want you to be able to talk intelligently about video games in a way that uh, understands, acknowledges, and builds on um, you know, game studies, game studies, game studies, video game studies is a discipline. Like it's an academic discipline. It's kind of niche, but it's, it exists. Um, and it's something that uh, I defined my dissertation as contributing to my uh, 2008 dis uh, dissertation um, and the edited collection that I produced a little bit later. Um, these are works in the genre of video of the academic genre or discipline of video game studies. Uh, there is a academic journal, there's actually several academic journals, um, but the game studies field is basically uh, 20 years old, uh, basically around 2000, 2001, that's when it really got started formally, and that's something that I'd like for you to, to know about and understand. Okay, so a couple of things here. This is, um, these are the two books that, we'll inf that we will look at several selections from, although I think, uh, yeah, as I'm putting things together, I'm, I'm feeling like understanding video games might be more of just like an optional background reading kind of thing because it's a lot of the content that you'll find there is um, I'm going to be presenting in lecture anyway, so it might just be another way to get the same thing. But um, let's take a look at what this should actually look like for you. So this is um, actually this will be my chance to verify that this link actually works. So um, this should take me into the library and I'm logging in with my NetID and this is what you would do also to, to access this. But let's see if this is the right link. Finding the right link into these is kind of tricky sometimes. Okay, good. So this is um, this is a tool called Leganto. That's the, the interface that I'm seeing right now, which doesn't matter, but what you need is you want to view this book online and this should take me to it here. And I'm seeing if this works. Yeah, good, okay. And then finally, read online. Finally, here we go. So, uh, and this is the, um, the you know the ProQuest ebook reader, which I don't like at all, but it does let you have access to the content. So, if you want to look at specific pages or specific chapters, you can look at those. You know, it's okay. You know, it gives you the access to the content for free. If you want to look at the game, I mean, look at this book uh, physically. Our library has at least one copy. It might not be the current edition, but I'm sure it's fine. Um, so, but that only works if you're local. And in fact, the library not be may, may not be open uh, actually at all this term. Come to think of it, but um, anyway, the book is available for free online. So you know, uh, go ahead and get it this way. The other one, there actually are a couple of different ways to access this book, but this is the one I recommend right here. So you can like our our library does have a physical copy. Um, I actually don't own a physical copy, but um, you can read it online for free. And this website. Uh, the Minnesota, University of Minnesota Press website, um, they've hosted this on, uh, what is that? Oh, it's just a Robin, it's just a big Robin. Um, they've hosted this on this uh, platform called Manifold and it lets you read it online, but th this online reader is much better than the ebook reader. Um, I mean, just one thing, the text is bigger, but like you can jump through different things and um, very quickly and like jump to different chapters. Um, and the cool thing is actually you should check, but the, you know, obviously, you know, you see full, full color illustrations, right? Um, you can also highlight and annotate the text as you read it. And some of these, they, they also published several, uh, the, the authors of this book created several meta games that they've published, uh, inside this book here. And sometimes these links have not worked actually but yeah these links are actually broken but uh the games can be played if you go back to the cover or the, where the, was the title page wherever i was um they've hosted them all on itch.io so you can actually just go here and play them some of these you can play in a browser and some you have to download but they're um they're here you know so they, these are games that they've um shared this way oh actually they don't have the triforce game here I should ask about that. So I, I haven't actually reached out to these authors, but I'm hoping they can join us in our third week of this class. These are um, people I know, so they have offered in the past to uh, be guest speakers in my class, but I need to reach out and see if they are available um, in the third week. So let's see, Take let me take a look. Um, that's a lot of text. Yeah, it is. Let me see. <laughs> I, I kind of tuned out from uh, here a bit. 
Let me see. I, I'm going back to Discord here a little bit. Um, yeah, fiction writing is great. Is better than essay. I'm going back to the comments now. So Jack P. Um, I, and actually, I will accept a creative option in many cases. So like, if you'd rather write like short fiction that you think accomplishes the same goals as an essay would, in other words, like uh, saying something interesting and, and novel that's based on research, like. I've seen students do really good work in, in a, a fictional modality, and so I, I welcome that. Um, let's see. So Amari is another game that uh, Phoenix22 is mentioning. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and Al, you're mentioning the, the two big hurdles, I think, that people, I, I think, when they set out to make video games art, uh, I think that they, they have in mind. One is that uh, the, the passivity situation, that was Roger Ebert's uh, objection, famously. Uh, to video, the question of whether video, game, video games can be art. But I, I, as I think many people correctly pointed out, I think he missed the point. It's the, that is the point. Like the, the point of video games is that they put you in those situations to force you to make those choices. It, they don't control your interpretation of those choices, but they give you those choices and then they let you do different things with it. So art, video games are still very much about interpretation, just like art is. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I basically, I, the question of are video games art to me is, like I used to do a day on class, I, I might even, maybe we should do a day in class about that discussion, but I just think it's so obviously true that video games are art that it's not that much worth like arguing about, I guess. Like it's just sort of, I mean, obviously video games are art. I mean, they're not, I mean, some are good, some are bad, but like that's the case with paintings and sculpture and theater. Like this is all different kinds of art. So Jack, I don't know, it worked for me just now as you saw me click through it. It takes you into the library system, so it's kind of weird, but it, it should, the first link should ask you to log in. Uh, yeah, Tim and Turtle, okay. When you say my collection, Tim and Turtle, are you talking about in the Leganto thing, or is it, um, well, anyway, maybe we don't need to solve this problem now. Maybe we can look at it later, but um, I wanna, maybe it, it could be that, the, the Leganto list has not been, yeah, it hasn't been vetted yet. Okay, that's right. So that means that basically that link that I saw that said view online, uh, that probably isn't available to you yet because the librarian has to double check that it's available and then activate it. And it will be, it's just like they have, it's a, just a formality. And I, if they haven't done it by, by the time we need the class, I'm sure I can just ask and they can do it. Um, but there's a librarian that has to actually give a check a thumbs up to it but it is yeah it is accessible uh in the system it's just it might not be accessible in the reading list as i've presented it because the reading list has not been approved by the librarian which is very much in the weeds of how the system works but that's uh that's probably what's going on there anyway let's move on um <laughs> So yeah, these are some of the games, and I say some of the games because I'm sure I'll add others. Like I've got a bunch more. Um, you know, Steam, the the platform for PC games, uh, they have a winter sale. I think it's still going on, so um, you might want to check out some of those, some of these titles and see if they're on sale there. Um, I did. I picked up several t several interesting looking titles recently. Uh, Hypnospace Outlaw is one that I'm pretty excited about playing, um, and, I, and I will probably add that to this list as well. Um, I just put a bird feeder in, like right outside this window where I'm teaching, and I've finally seen this is the first bird I've seen on it, and I don't know what kind of bird that is, but that's part of the reason is I wanted to learn more about birds. It's probably a sparrow, I guess. I don't know. I'm trying to learn about bird recognition, but it seems to be enjoying the suet. And I, there, there is a, a pair of downy woodpeckers that live in my yard, and so I, I put the suet out in this bird feeder because I know they like the suet and I, it would be cool to see them up close. Um, but anyway, <laughs> distractions and distractions. Um, let's see more. Oh, sale, sale only last, last one more day. Wow. Okay. So um, what else is going on? Oh yeah, it just works. It does. It just works. Uh, <laughs> uh, Fortnite is not on the list. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, I have seen a fair amount of squirrels, um, and also the, another advantage of having this thing right here is that um, if squirrels are messing with the bird feeder, I could I could yell at them through the window much more easily. Um, but I have a pretty good squirrel-proof feeder over that way that they've not been able to get into. Um, but they this one I'm sure they could if they if they once they discover it they, they'll figure it out. Um, cool. Okay, so uh, let me move in. Let me move on a little bit into the class. 
structure and syllabus and stuff. So here's some of these a description of the assignments. Um, I probably need to proofread these a little bit more to be honest, but let's talk about these in terms of their goals and kind of how you'll do these and then I'll, I'll see. The chat keeps going, so I'm gonna, I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, so first project to this week is the commercial. Uh, we're gonna talk about video game history and so part of the point of the commercial here is to understand different moments in video game history, different examples of games from, I've just kind of set 1987 as a pretty arbitrary threshold, but uh, the idea is to take a game from, a game that actually exists, but that predates 1987, uh, not 1947, that would definitely limit your options, but 1987, and uh, create, a, create a commercial for it. And I don't know if you saw, if you if you tuned into the stream before I started talking, uh, I was playing just a, a, in a, a, a video, YouTube video of a bunch of 80s video game commercials, and you can find these compilations, and they are very interesting cultural artifacts themselves. And that's kind of the, the goal, is to understand uh, those cultures and those moments and look at how the advertising for different consoles it tried to appeal to different audiences like the, a, a big difference that you'll see is like whereas like 1980s the NES console was very like family friendly and cartoony and then like the, uh, the 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 Genesis came along and it was all like edgy and like extreme and like the Super Nintendo was like hey let's, we, we, I should do that too and so Nintendo tried to be edgy and extreme with the Super Nintendo advertising and like this is sort of and then like the, the the Virtual Boy showed up and was like this bizarre cyberpunk thing. And uh, like it, it's a whole, like there's so much you can look at with video game advertising. Uh, and going back into the 1970s, like home consoles were a thing that had to be described. Like people didn't have those, so they didn't know what they were. And so uh, a lot of times the, the commercials or the, the magazine advertisements are like explaining what this is. And so um, like a big reason the Magnavox Odyssey didn't take off was that people didn't know they didn't think they could use it because it was a game console produced by the TV company Magnavox, and they thought, well, I don't have a Magnavox TV, I can't probably can't use it. But you can, it just plugs into the RF input. So um, people didn't understand that, they didn't buy it, and it didn't uh, really take off. But yeah, it, 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 interestingly, the, the Odyssey, and then uh, the, when the Atari came along and the Channel F, they, they were all kind of built around this idea of like, let's make family game night uh, around the TV using this thing, and so it was like, it was meant for like the whole family to play together. And so like you, you see that often in the advertising. So anyway, those are the kinds of uh, values, ideological values that I think uh, would be fun to play with in, the, um, in your commercials. And, and you can obviously be pretty creative with this, take this lots of different directions that are all valid. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I don't really have very specific expectations for this project other than the parameters that I've outlined here. And there's a bit more detail on the uh, assignment page, but uh, that's, that's pretty much it. All right, so a close playing is going to be where you do something kind of like what we do in literary studies, uh, where you analyze a small part of something to try to understand the entirety of something. And I, I don't know. I mean, I have um, I've mentioned here you can do these collaboratively, although I, I'm not sure you'd have to really coordinate that to make that work. Um, and that would probably be something easiest to coordinate over a live stream on Twitch. Um, but if you don't feel like setting that up, that's fine. Um, I, I can show you other ways to record video game play and talk about it. Because that's basically what we're doing here is recording a short section of video game play, like up to a minute of video game play of yourself playing a video game and then talk about it. And that's uh, that talking about it is where I hope to see you expanding on some of the ideas and values that we talk about next week in terms of culture, um, but also informing and understanding uh, video game history based on stuff we talked about this week. So that's the idea for the close playing. Uh, the meta game, we'll talk about that in week three. Uh, let's just kind of wait for that, I guess. Uh, participation, this being an online class, I do expect to see you online consistently. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to take role formally, but I do want to keep an eye on who's here and who's not. Um, it should be pretty easy today. Uh, but the... Um, I did say Cyberpunk, but not Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, Sorry, um, it, it, the, the, yeah, being online is, is an important thing and I see many of you are online, which is great. Um, I do want to keep roll though, or keep, I, I do want to record it somehow so that I can make sure to see people that aren't uh, checking in so that I can follow up and make sure, you're, make sure you're doing okay and that you plan on continuing with the class. Um, the final project is open-ended. Uh, I mean, it's a project that you'll, you will design, and so I've got a couple of suggestions, but these are starting points that I uh, expect you to uh, run with. And of course, I will advise and give you suggestions and feedback and show you examples, but um, it is something that ultimately will be self-oriented, self uh, self-directed uh, to some extent. So 
uh, something you should probably even start thinking about now, um, just as far as what kinds of things might be available. But okay, so I see we're running close to the end of the hour, so I'm going to be wrapping it up in a few minutes. Um, but if you do have, I mean, if you certainly feel free to keep chatting in Discord um, about whatever, but if you do have any questions about the syllabus specifically, this might be a good time to pose those in the Discord chat. Um, but I will be seeing you soon in Zoom also, so that's, um, you know, that's that's another place to do that too. Uh, but I do want to talk about the grading. Um, I actually should probably proofread the, the these are all the, um, yeah, these are, these, this stuff is kind of boilerplate, but I should probably proofread it to make sure that it's uh, up to date. Uh, I, I'll get back to the grading in a second, but let me just kind of skim this. Uh, most, a lot of your work is going to be online, um, but not public unless you choose it to be. Um, if, for example, you already have a blog that you like using through UMW blogs or UMW domains, then I think it would be useful and, and cool to see you blog for this class, but I'm not requiring that. We're not doing a group blog, uh, which I usually do for this class. I usually have a class blog that we all contribute to, but I'm not doing it this time. Um, I guess a couple other things in terms of content. Uh, whenever I require you to play a game that might have some disturbing content, I will try to tell you ahead of time what kinds of things it might contain um, so you can be prepared for that. If there is some subject matter that makes you uncomfortable to the point that you feel you can't participate in a discussion about it, then uh, let me know. Uh, and that, that's okay to excuse yourself from that. Um, some of the topics that we'll get into could be dis, uh, could be controversial, I guess. Uh, this is where the decorum here comes in. Um, when we talk about games, video game culture, uh, one of the things that we need to talk about next week, especially, is like the culture around video games, like the culture around people who play video games and talk about video games. And it can occasionally be a very toxic culture. And so we will talk about that and address that, um, but we will not include that or engage directly with that. Uh, in other words, we're not gonna go out into Reddit and try to change people's minds. Um, but if, you know, th like this Twitch stream is public, there are various ways in which this class does have a public uh, footprint. So it may, um, we may get some visitors from outside the class that have some thoughts that they wanna contribute. Um, I will be the, um, yeah, I, I will be the, I will deal with that if it comes up, um, but certainly within the class, I expect you all to be polite and encouraging and, and constructive in any kinds of disagreements or conversations that we have with each other. All right, so let's make sure we do that. Uh, and if that becomes a problem, I also will will deal with that internally if we need to. So, sorry, I'm just checking. <laughs> I have a eucalyptus tree right here, which is unusual. Um, and the person who planted this tree uh, told me that I need to watch it and see if it freezes because if it freezes it, it'll die but like if it if like just the top freezes that's okay but if it freezes down through the the, um, the roots that'll that's a, a problem I guess um, but I just noticed a big chunk of leaves just fell off of it so I think maybe a bird just hit it but it did get below freezing last night so it might have it might have gotten cold anyway I'll, I'll check out on it later um, anyway so uh, do you have any questions let me see I think some people are still typing um bu 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 bu. Oh yeah, Portal's dollar ninety nine. That's great. Yes, and Tim and Turtle has has mentioned the G word. Um, that's that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, it's okay. So I don't want to get into it today, but uh, GamerGate is a or was an event. Um, I guess it really coalesced around like 2014. Um, it was an event, an, an alleged controversy, but essentially a, a rallying. I'm not going to get into it, but it, it basically a, a, a point, uh, an event of extreme toxicity in video game uh, communities uh, that led to, um, you know, some pretty harsh consequences. So uh, we'll get into it. But yeah, it is a, uh, a way to generally refer to toxicity in gaming culture, which is how I just used it. Uh, but there was a set of events, a series of, a series of events, a series of key players. Um, again, we'll get into it next week. I haven't really got my notes together for that lecture. Um, and it's okay if you've never heard of it, honestly. So, like, don't don't feel bad. <laughs> like, um, honestly, you didn't miss much because it was all kind of trivial, except that, you know, some people have pointed out that the a lot of the, um, I mean, and this is me speculating here. This is me going out on a limb. But some of the communities and strategies of communication within those communities um, may have laid the groundwork for things like... Um, 
like Breitbart and uh, QAnon. And that's an interesting theory that I just put out there. But I don't know. Uh, we'll get into, maybe we'll get into that later. Uh, yes, and I think, Jack, that's a pretty decent summary of it right there uh, that Jack P. just provided. So I will add my thumbs up to that. So <laughs> thanks. Uh, all right, good. So let me see um, anything else. That I, oh, yeah, let me talk about grading. So uh, this is a class where it does not make sense for me to really penalize lateness or, or think about things in kind of a nitpicky point by point kind of way. Um, that said, there are, are a number of things that you need to accomplish in order to be successful with this class. And those things are encapsulated in the assignments. So like the learning outcomes define what we're trying to do in the class, the assignments get you to those learning outcomes. They let you do those things. So that's why they're there. Um, hopefully those connections are clear, but I can also, if not, I can kind of draw them out. And I started actually building this whole matrix just to sort of explain that, but it got really um, convoluted. So I, I didn't share it with you yet, but um, you need to do all the assignments and they do have due dates because you know, they need to be done before the next one. And there's a sequence, there's some scaffolding built into this. Uh, so I, I do want you to do these assignments when they're due. Um, that said, I'm not going to be giving you letter grades or taking points off for lateness or anything like that. The grading scale for this class until we get to the final is a check, check, plus, check, minus. And that's the only grade I will give you for anything. I will give you feedback, um, but as far as a grade, it's just that. It's just that check, check, plus, check, minus. A check is good. A check means you did what you were asked to do and you were successful. Like that's, that's great. Check minus means you were missing something um, or some aspect of whatever the learning goal for that project was didn't connect fully or whatever, but that's something that I would, I would tell you about in the feedback. If there's something that I thought you were missing, uh, then that's, that's what that check minus would signify. And a check plus would be kind of, you did what I asked you to do, you were successful, but then you took it in a totally surprising and interesting way on top of that. So that would be kind of just a way of noting that some projects, you know, might be uh, above and beyond what I've asked for and are therefore excellent. And so a check plus is just a quick way to signify that. Um, so it's not a letter grade um, in the traditional sense. It's not an A, B, C, D, E, et cetera. Um, it's just a way to give me, for me to kind of acknowledge that it was successful and then let you kind of take that and move on with it. Um, and then I can give you feedback. I will probably do, uh, since many of these projects will be kind of visual, I will probably do video, like recorded video feedback, kind of like what I'm doing now uh, for each of your projects. But that's, that's my basic idea there. Uh, when we get to the end of the semester and you've completed your final project, uh, I will ask you to complete one more. Oh, here's a squirrel. Um, I will ask you to complete uh, a self-evaluation where you propose a final grade for yourself based on how well you think you've accomplished the learning goals of the class. So I'll ask you to articulate that to say, here's why I think this work is a B or B plus or A plus, A whatever. Um, we actually, we don't have A plus here. We only go up to A. So it's A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, and so on. Um, but, but you'll spell it out based on what you think is the uh, the best description of how well you've accomplished the goals for this class and the goals for this class are those uh, articulated here in the syllabus in this first section. So the squirrel that is over here is looking for nuts and I know this is, a, I mean, I, I assume this is the same squirrel that I often see here. Yeah, I just found one uh, because he's got a bunch buried in my uh, flower bed here. And so he'll, it, they're really funny to watch like the way they dig, they dig and then they they like dig like that and then they, they bury it, like they put it back down. Um, but I don't know if this squirrel has discovered the bird feeder yet. He's right under it, or she, I don't know, <laughs> uh, is right under it. And so uh, they may discover it soon, but they seem to be finding things to eat. So maybe they'll figure out where, where those things are coming from. But also I know they've buried a bunch of nuts right in that same spot. So it could be they're just digging up their own nuts. I, would, I haven't figured out how to do it just um, physically, but I, I I would kind of like to point another webcam out into the yard so you all can see these things too. So whenever I see something cool, I can I can switch over to the other camera and show you what I'm looking at. It's just a squirrel, but it's cool to watch. Uh, okay, so I'm going to probably wrap this stream up and um, I'm going to take a short break and then uh, it is 11 and there is a stream scheduled for 11, or not a stream, a Zoom conference scheduled for 11. Um, I'm going to take a short break and uh, eat my donut and then join you here in the Zoom call. So this should be, you should have access to this through Canvas. Like you should just see it like I am here, like click on the Zoom thing and then click join. And you should be able to, I think you can join the meeting before I do in case, you know, in case you want to jump in there before I get on there. Um, but the main goal is to kind of 
you know, go through some more Q&A, make sure that you're all clear on what we're doing for this class. And then I'll help you find your groups and uh, make sure you, you know, make sure you know which group you're in and get you started um, getting to know each other in those groups. So uh, that's the plan. I'm going to wrap up the stream here and um, eat my donut, but I'll be, uh, I'll be on the Zoom call in maybe five minutes or so, five, ten minutes. Uh, we'll see. But feel free to chat if you get there before me, if it if indeed it lets you in. I'm not sure if it will. But um, in any case, I'll see you soon. Um, and um, yeah, I'm sorry about the, uh, yeah, I'm not going to eat the donut on the stream. I don't want to make you all jealous of my donut. So anyway, I'll see you all in a minute. And uh, yeah, hope you're doing well.